Whoppity boop up! Holy shit, people. Oh my goodness. Let's get it started. Woo! I'm back, bitches. And I'm nervous for some reason. <laughs> Today has been another one of those days where all day I was feeling a little bit wonky. And you know what? I think it might have something to do with these new pills that I'm on. Um, anyway. God, I feel... I just feel... Right now, I feel out of the rhythm. The last... I don't know. 50 podcasts I've done. I was comfortable doing them. But right now, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. For reasons... That I'm not sure of. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh crap. I know what I'm forgetting to do. God damn it. This isn't good. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay. Bada boom. That's what I'm talking about. You see amateur hour up in here. You got the wrong lighting on. Jesus Christ, my friends. Now imagine... Imagine this situation. But put yourself in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> That's what it feels like right now for me. I don't know what's going on. Like, my anxiety and depression is kind of getting worse with this new medication I'm on. I gotta get rid of it. I gotta... And, you know, I got a doctor's appointment coming up to discuss you know, my progress on the new meds, and I'm going to tell the motherfucker, I'm going to say, hey, bro, this shit ain't working. And to be honest, I want to get to a point where I don't have to be on the medication. But enough about me, enough about depression. Actually, we're probably going to talk about it more. But here's the card for today. Um, I'm, I think what I'm going to start doing is actually telling you what I've written on the card, because what we're going to talk about. So, I want to talk about, oh, here comes Olive. We're going to talk about depression. We're going to talk about my pills, which I already did already a little bit. We're going to talk about randomness. We're going to talk about dreams. But we're also going to talk about the presidential debate. The United States Democratic Presidential Debate. Uh, that just happened. It just happened like a couple days ago. Okay, there was two of them. I didn't see the first one, but I did see the second one. The second one I cared more about because it had um, the people that I'm actually familiar with and the people that if I were in the United States, uh, I would vote for... Come here, Olive. So... We'll, we'll save that for after I talk about the other shit that I mentioned. And then we'll do a little bit of Reddit, as usual. So. Um, depression. Anxiety. It sucks. We all know it sucks. Now, here's the thing. We all have, we all have a little bit of depression, a little bit of, of anxiety throughout our life. Um, but some people have it way more than others. I happen to be one of those people. Um, any little thing, any little change... Hey, you can't lay on my corridor with... Any little change that happens in my life, I over-exaggerate it in my brain, and I twist it way out of proportion... And then I uh, I panic. I start to have panic attacks. And I mean really any little change. And this causes me to not pursue, you know, things that I should be pursuing to accelerate your breath. No, ac accelerate my life, you know. But uh, as I get older, I'm learning different ways to cope 
with this depression and the anxiety and what comes with it. And so I want to discuss some of the methods that I use. Just, uh, just for the people out there who, you know, don't know what to do and they want, they want something to look for, you know, they need some sort of answer. But I also want to, I'm going to talk about depression, you know, not every episode, but I will talk about it. It's because it's something, it's a part of my life. And so I, this podcast is going to revolve around things that I'm familiar with. Also just topics in general, but I want to cover depression and anxiety sometimes. Just not only for other people, but it helps me just talking about it. Even though I'm just talking to a camera and right now I don't have an audience at all. But I'm in the works of promoting this. So, with that being said... Uh, Some things I do to uh, help cope with depression. Now, before we get into that, growing up as a child, I... Growing up as a child, uh, as opposed to growing up as an adult. Anyway, growing up, um, I definitely had the same depression and anxiety that I still feel today. But as a child... It did not occur to me that I had depression or depression was even a thing. I just, it felt, it was just normal to me because it's all I ever experienced. It's all I ever had. But, um, so I never really, I never pursued any sort of coping mechanism. All I did was uh, just take it. And... Not only did I just accept it and take it, um, I would let it take over me. And like I said, it would prevent me from continuing to do things that I needed to do. But as I'm getting older, I, I have discovered different ways, not only through therapy, but just doing my own research because I get, it got to a point where I said, I can't, there's got to be something. There's, there's no way this is how I'm going to live my life, you know? So some methods that work for me, um, what I started with was writing a journal. Um, and the journal was, on, was um, it's not, it wasn't a daily journal. It was a journal that I... Um, What's what's the term I'm trying to come up with here? I specifically created this journal to allow myself to only write in it when I was depressed or or anxious. But I mean, even if I wasn't depressed, if I'm not depressed or anxious, I didn't even really feel motivated to write in it. So when I am depressed or anxious, my first inclination is to actually go to the journal and write. And just doing that helps, helps. A little bit. It does something. You know, you got to get it out some way. Whether that's journaling or just talking about it to a camera or to a person. Now, for me, I've always hated talking about my feelings um, to other people, discussing that. And I still do. And So, I prefer the journal method. But, you know, to each his own. It... It might help for you to talk to another person about stuff. But for me, you know, I have talked to people and it does help. It helps quite a bit actually. But, you know, the journaling is still a great method. But to be honest, I I think talking to people is better because you got you got some feedback at least. Whether it's good or bad, you know, either way you have something to think about or whatever. Another thing that I like to do is, you know, you got the meditation, you got the yoga. That stuff, it definitely helps significantly. 
The only problem is actually committing yourself to doing it on a daily basis. And you might say to yourself, well, I can't afford to... Oh, I got to sneeze. <laughs> you might say to yourself, I can't afford to do a goddamn yoga class every day. And that's... You don't have to do that. There's plenty of videos online, YouTube, that you you just follow what the instructor says on the YouTube video. Uh, Yoga with Adrian is one that I follow, and it's great. There's all kinds. She she gives demonstrations of yoga for all kinds of things, f- from like back pain to neck pain to to yoga for depression yoga for stress yoga for like she has yoga for literally everything she has yoga for i can't think of a a strange example but she has yoga for things that you wouldn't even expect some you wouldn't even expect there would be a yoga for that thing and it might you know you could be a little skeptical about it. Even You might even be skeptical about yoga in general. And you might think, well, how is that going to help me? But I encourage you, if you do have depression or anxiety, just to try it. Just try it. Because, you know, what, what harm is it going to do? You don't like it, you don't like it. But here's the thing. I bet if you try it, you will like it. Because... I was obviously, I was one of the skeptical people. I thought, well, I'll try this, but I don't see how it's going to help me. But when I actually tried it, once you're done the yoga session, like during the yoga session, you know, it's a, it's relaxing. It's, you know, there's stretching. Sometimes it's hard to do and you, it's a little uh, aggravating trying to position yourself certain ways. But once it's once you're done the session and you get up, there's this it's almost like and this is gonna sound like bullshit, but it's not. It's it it feels as though like you're high on something. And I'm not joking when I say this. There's a there's an actual sensation in your body where you feel completely relaxed like you feel it it's not like you know people give you like uh people will say you know it's like having a high sometimes when they do specific things like i don't know writing or or uh you know whatever but when actually doing yoga you can actually feel something from it and it's a it's a strange feeling but it feels good Anyway, so yoga is a technique. Meditation is a big factor. Just sitting and doing nothing and letting your mind focus on nothing is very, very important. Because we're constantly focused on, you know, everything. Specifically, our phones, you know, with social media. Social media pretty well has taken over uh, our lives. The majority of people on this planet are, you know, glued to their phones every moment of their awakeness. If they're awake, they have their phone on their person. And if there's ever a moment throughout their day that they're not interacting with something or someone, they have their phone in their hand and they're scrolling through Twitter or Instagram. Now, I have, I'm actually not addicted to my phone like most people are. I can put down my phone and not use it all day. I barely touch my phone. And I'm glad to say that I can actually do that. And I 
actually do not use Facebook anymore. I do not use Instagram anymore. I do use Twitter a little bit. I uh, don't use Snapchat. And the the weird thing is, is that my outro, like title card, has links to all of my social media, but I don't even use them anymore. So I might change that. I might not. I don't know. Um, because I feel like if I do gain some sort of, or when I should say, because you gotta, you gotta have that mindset of when, not if, when I get the audience that I want, I, you know, I'm probably going to start using the, the social media to, um, you know, promote the, promote what I'm doing here. But other than that, I I don't think I'm I don't I don't want to use it I don't want to use it to for what the general public uses it for and that is to just stare at other people's pictures and what other people are doing in their lives and it's all fake bullshit it's all fake every it's all the happy moments in people's lives lives it's either the happy moments or you'll get like uh, when something really bad happens to someone, they post about it just so that they get a bunch of attention to make themselves feel better. And I, ugh, that grosses me out when I see that shit. And yes, I am, uh, I'm accused of doing that a few times, but... I'm not I I've only done it on rare occasions when I really needed someone to you know talk to or whatever uh but I I don't know I don't want to do that anymore Now I don't want uh, for if anybody's watching right now which probably not but anyway I don't want you to think that this podcast is is starting to go in a different direction because the pat the last episode and this episode have both been very um kind of dim I should say I'm trying to think of a better word than that but you know usually I am uh over exaggerated <laughs> and uh screaming a lot or whatever trying to be funny there will be that, and there will be stuff like this. You know, it's just I have this whole ebb and flow of my life where some days I'm happy, some days I'm sad. And when when you're in the sad states of life, it's hard to just flick the switch and turn the funny on. You know, some people are better at it than others. Me, I'm still practicing at it. So, I'm working towards making that happen. But I don't want, I don't want to seem disingenuous either. Like, I don't want to put on this fake act that is obvious that what I'm doing is not genuine. Because I, w I would rather be just genuine. I don't want, I'm sick of this fake, of fake people, you know? Really, TV and movies, before the internet was even around, that is what influ influenced people to really be their fake selves. Because as an actor, you're uh, a fake persona. And movies and TV shows have been known to uh, develop this storyline of you go through a struggle and then you end with a happy ending and that's it. And people get caught up in that idea and they strive for that only. And they feel like because it's been seen in the fairy tale of a movie or TV show that that is how their life should end up being end up with pure happiness but 
in order to be happy, you have to have the negative side as well. Because if you're only happy all the time, well, you, you just can't be. You need, you need, you need the negativity to really appreciate what it means to be happy. And you cannot be happy unless you've uh, experienced the dark side. You know, yin and yang. You need darkness to find the light. If you only have the light, then what is the point? And you can make an argument against that, but for now, that's all I got. So, what else do I do to fight depression? Well, exercise is important. Um, going to the gym, though, is not something I've perfected in my life. I've tried to go in the gym in the past, but... That is not something I'm good at sticking to. I've gone to the the longest of uh, the longest uh, consecutive days I've gone in a row to the gym has probably been three days tops, and then I quit. There's, I don't know. I have no motivation to go to the gym, although I want to have a motivation to go to the gym because I know that in order to have a healthy mind, you need to have a healthy body. They got to work together. And you got to eat healthy as well, which I don't really do, but I, you know, more often than not, I'm eating healthy. But there are a lot of times where I'm not. So there's those factors at play, which I need to work on. But for exercise, I am, I have been walking a lot. And it does help. Just getting, just doing some sort of exercise, even even just going out in nature can be very beneficial to this. And so that's just a few tips. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I would do. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So right now, I'm not as, you know, I'm not as fucking hyper as I'm usually in. Because I have a fucking, I have a headache. And this whole, this whole day today, I've been just getting like I, I'd get angry over nothing and then I'd start thinking about shit and there's just a lot that's on my mind and I keep overthinking it and plus the headache on top of all this is is not fun and it's because of these goddamn new pills I'm on the last pills I was on they actually slightly helped with the depression and anxiety but there was negative uh side effects that i don't want to get into so i switched to these pills that i'm currently on and it's been probably well a bit over a well i'd say it's about a month and a half maybe i've been on them and, you know, they say it takes about a month or two for them to actually really start taking effect and it, they, when it comes to pills, they affect everyone differently. So you really got to experiment to find what uh, is right for you. And the previous pills I was on, I was on them for like three years. And then before that, I had something else and those didn't work either. But these pills that I'm on now are worse than the last two that I had. Because I'm getting, not only am, am I feeling more depressed some days, but I'm also getting headaches. And I'm also having weird, like, anger problems. I'll just get angry 
at nothing. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Like, if uh, today I tried to, I was trying to vacuum out my truck. So, my shop vac is at my parents' house. So, I drove to my parents' house. Uh, first thing I did was clean out all the garbage out of my truck because I had a lot of garbage in there. And then I pulled out all the mats, and then I had a blanket on the back seat because that's where Olive sits because he gets hairs everywhere. And then I went into the garage where the shop vac was. Uh, couldn't find the filter for the goddamn shop vac. So I was getting pissed off about that because it should have just been right there with the shop vac. But it wasn't. And then... Uh, I took the shop back outside, grabbed an extension cord, and there's a plug outside my parents' house, plugged it in, plugged the shop back in, didn't turn on. There was another plug plugged in into the other one, still didn't work, so I'm like, well, fuck me. Is it the plug or is it the shop back? And so I tried to plug other things in there and nothing worked, so I was just getting, I was getting very angry over that. And it's just little things like that where I'll just get extremely angry. And then I, it's like I have, a, I have a headache every day. So when you have a headache and stuff isn't working uh, the way it's supposed to, you get angry. But I'm not sure if the headaches are from these new pills or if the headaches are from the transition from my old pills to the new pills. Because whenever I wouldn't, like if I missed a day of taking those previous pills, I would get this same sort of headache. So that's why I'm thinking it's because of the transition from one pill to the next. But I, I did the transition process properly, and I'm off those old pills now, but I still get the headache. So every once in a while, I still take one of the old pills when my headache gets so intense that the only thing I can do is take the old pill to make that, and then the headache goes away, but it doesn't go away right away, it goes away the next day. And if I don't take it, I'll just continue to have the headache every day. So I don't know what's going on. It's, uh, it's shady. And I've also, ever since I started taking these new pills, I stopped hanging out with people. I stopped. What was I going to say? I can't. I was going to say something. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. And I also stopped smoking weed. Like, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, ma it's putting me in a worse spot than I ever was in. And I thought these pills were going to be, uh, you know, step forward in some better direction because after explaining the negative effects of the other pills to the doctor, I thought, well, we must be heading in a, good, in a better direction by now, but no, it's actually going the wrong way. So hopefully I can find something new to get on. And to be honest, I don't want to be on pills forever, and that is uh, that is something I'm discussing in the therapy sessions as well, that pills are not your answer for, for this. They're, you know, they can help, but it's not, it's not the, it's not the go-to for, there's a fucking term for this, and I can't think of it. Anyway, so yeah. yeah, let's get personal, personal, I want to get personal, personal. Okay, so I'm hoping next next week's episode is not going to be a fucking depressing shit show. It's going to be better, hopefully. But either way, I'm still going to do it. Because the consistency is key.
It's very, very key. If there's anything, um, if there's some, if there's anything you should focus on when it comes to YouTube, it's consistency of uploads. More than anything, that's the number one rule I'd say. My headache is like spreading. Oh, that's why I was getting smartied. The smarty on the hat was getting pushed into my head. <clears throat> so I've been, uh, I had a quick, simple chat with someone uh, about randomness um, and how randomness, from this person's perspective, randomness is not necessarily... Um, a key factor or randomness should not be randomness should not be the focus when it comes to making YouTube videos and yeah okay I can agree with that but if you look at the world when it comes to uh, really everything in nature and the universe itself, it's all randomness. It's very random. And we see randomness in everything we do. And randomness, just because something's random, doesn't mean it's not organized. To be random can be very beneficial. Because random to be because randomness is uh it shows it gives you an ex it gives you uh an opportunity to experiment with new things, but it's also refreshing in a way, and randomness can also be very very funny on a comedic sense, so there's lots of benefits to randomness. Just like uh, there can be negative aspects of randomness. So if someone's going to give you advice on how to do something, okay, if someone gives you advice, if you go to someone for advice and they give you advice and you disagree with their advice, don't feel like you have to necessarily uh, agree with them and do what they say just because they've been through it and know what's going on. Now, that doesn't mean you should completely ignore what they say. You need to take what they say and modify it to your own benefit. Because the thing is, everybody has their own way of doing things. Everybody has their own thought process. Everybody has ex different experiences in life. So if you feel, if you truly feel um, you need to do something a specific way and someone tells you to do it another way, don't feel like you have to do it that way. I repeated myself, but. Um, randomness can be a good thing. Be random. Change it up. Fi and when you f in, when you find what is good and what is uh, necessary for what it is you're doing, then you s you can stick to it. But the randomness allows you to explore these ideas, and maybe just the idea of being random is in fact your stability and that sounds counterintuitive counter how can random be a stable uh, outcome but it can be I like to use a youtuber as an example for this um, he is a uh, like an OG YouTuber, doesn't do it much anymore, but he's getting back into it with his, uh, he's doing a charity thing now, 
Anyway, Joe Nation TV. He used to do lots of random style videos that were comedy inspired. And they were great. Very good. Um, and very funny too. It's the reason why I subscribed to him. But in his most recent video with his... Uh, he brought his wife in on his most recent video and they and she reacted to uh his old videos and she hated every one of them <laughs> except for the one he showed that was about her but anyway she hated the she didn't find it funny she hated the randomness and Joe himself I shouldn't say she hated it. Don't get me wrong. She just found it cringeworthy. And she was honest about how she felt about it. And Joe even said himself that he wants to take his efforts in another direction. And that direction is his charity thing that he's doing. So... Um, but he's also, he's much older than he was when he started these YouTube videos, so the older you get, the more experience you get, and which means ultimately you as a person change and really in general, every day you change slightly different thoughts, different opinions, you learn different things, you hear different things from different people, different stuff happens, and you change. But some people, some people change in, uh, well, I don't know, how should I say it? Some people change in a way that they still bring forth their old ways but they evolve it into a, you know, they evolve with the time, with the times. So I feel like Joe Nation can still stick to his roots of what made him popular, but he can do it in a different way, but he just doesn't, he doesn't have any motivation to do the stuff he was, uh, the stuff that built him to who he was. And that could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe his wife convinced him otherwise. Maybe that's one of many factors. Who knows? But I don't I don't want to pick apart his life because I don't know what's going on. But I'm just saying... I'm just saying things can work out. And again, well, I shouldn't say again, but I've said this before in previous podcasts. I am only 24 years old, okay? I know nothing. I only know what I know. <laughs> and that is, I know, I know stuff, okay? But... I definitely do not have the life experience that Joe Nation has. So maybe by the time I'm his age, I might have the same opinions. Who knows? And people have an argument that say, well, age should not be a factor in determining how you think about things or what you know in life. And yeah, I can agree with that. There's plenty of young, smart, intelligent people out there. But no matter how smart you are at a young age, you still don't have the life experience. For the most part. Some kids grow up in an environment where they have to raise themselves and maybe raise their brothers and sisters and that really gives you a 
a major head start on the life experience and and you know even though it's they it's hard for those children and it's a major struggle they uh by the time they reach their 20s they're well prepared for adulthood whereas me that was not the case by the time i you know graduated high school I was not prepared for adulthood in the slightest. And that's not and that's something that they don't teach in school. They teach a lot of bullshit in school. Um but what they don't teach you uh, is how to prepare for the real world. Ah. Oh my god. And you might say, "Well, that's the parents' job." Well, sure. The parents can play a role, but the majority of a child's life is spent in school, and school is meant to educate um, the children, and it's been stated that it, it's supposed to prepare them for the real world, but it doesn't, But uh, and traditionally, school was really created to prepare uh, children for the for the workplace you know you got to get used to working Monday to Friday you got to get w- used to a certain schedule to to waking up at a certain time to uh, sitting in a uniform fashion in columns and depending on what kind of school you go to you might have to wear a uniform um you know then there's the whole testing and and uh learning how to use powerpoint and all this bullshit and the uh, the test when it comes to the testing the it's really horrible the way that they test the children with multiple choice and uh The other different varieties of testing, I can't think of them on the top of my head right now, but um, it's really only a matter of memorization. It's not a matter of actually learning things because you can memorize everything that is needed to be uh, done on a test, but you have no idea what you're actually, uh, you know, you have no idea what you've actually memorized. You just you just memorize the words. And then when you see the answer, you write it down. That's how I used to do tests. I would just memorize I would I would sit down and just memorize paragraphs. And then I my mom would like ask questions related to that and then I would just recite the paragraph. But I had no idea what I was saying. I was just saying what I memorized. Anyway, you know, not every student uh, studies that way, but a lot, a lot do. You know, to every but every student is different, and every student learns differently. There's students that have trouble focusing in school. Lots of students have that. Me, me specifically, like. When a teacher is just talking, my mind wanders constantly. Or like when we have to read in class, or even if there's like a video presentation on on the whiteboard, on the overhead projector, I zone out. I always zoned out. I never paid attention. And it's not because I didn't want to. It was like, it was out of my control. So I would zone out during a lecture that was probably pretty important. And then I'd zone back in and I'd be like, fuck, I don't even know what she's talking about. And that happened every day. What are you doing? Stop that. In class. And so that's why I didn't really do good in school. But if school... If school taught you how to actually if they prepared you for life I feel like more people 
would be a lot more successful in whatever they wanted to do. And we'd see a lot more people actually pursuing their dreams rather than just jumping into the workforce and getting a job so they can make money. Because there's nothing that saddens me more than seeing people who gave up on their dream and simply just accepted a job that they hate. And actually, the other day I was working with someone who actually used to be an actor, and they had their own acting uh, or film production or whatever. And I talked to him a little bit about it, but it saddens me that people give up on their dreams. I hate seeing that. And you know, I gave up on my dream. I gave up on my dream when I was a mechanic. I remember that. I I was just like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to be a mechanic. And I didn't, I stopped doing YouTube videos. I stopped watching YouTube. I stopped writing. I stopped music making. I stopped everything. And you know what? It got, it led to a point where I was like, what am I doing? Why is this happening? And then I decided to, I decided I was going to get back into it. And I realized. I can't give up on this dream because it m- give it, if I give up on this dream, I might as well give up on everything because this is something I've wanted since you know as long as I can remember and when I see and hear about people who no matter what happens in their life they continue to pursue their dream and eventually it happens, that is what motivates me to continue working towards my dream. And so once I realized that, I jumped back in and I committed myself to the dream. And that's when this podcast started. And you know what? We're almost at fucking episode 100. This is episode 98 of the goddamn Dynamite Gizmo podcast, and I forgot to do the intro properly, but that's okay, because I have a headache, and today has been a shitty day. So, if you have a dream, and no matter how old you are, unless you're, like, really old, (laughs) well, even if you're really old, doesn't matter, who cares, life is life, right? Right? Now, you don't have to listen to me, but I'd just like to say, if you have or had a dream and there's still something in the back of your head that says, I wish I would have stuck with that dream, you should still get back into it, take the time, and put in the effort. To make that dream happen. No matter what it is. I mean what do you have to lose? Yeah you gotta struggle. Yeah you'll probably. It'll take years before anything happens. But. Imagine how happy you'll be. When that day comes. And you say to yourself. Wow. All that hard work finally led to what I've always wanted in my life. And at that moment, it'll all be worth it. Everything. And then from there on out, you're set. You've done what you wanted to do. Because we as human beings need goals. And we need to accomplish those goals. But if you have a major goal and have had it since you were a child and you give up on it 
and just never bother interacting with it ever again, there's always going to be that little thought in the back of your head that's going to come forward every now and again. And it's going to remind you that you gave up on something that you wanted more than anything. And that makes you feel like shit. So why give up on it? Just try. Try to do whatever it is. Even if you just start by taking tiny steps. Just do something to get the ball rolling on that dream. Because, you know, eventually that little bit of effort will move forward into something bigger and you'll learn from the previous effort and then eventually you're going to build something that will turn into what you wanted. But if you don't do anything, then you're guaranteed to not ever have anything happen. But if you at least try something, you have more chance of actually getting your dream pursued than if you didn't do anything at all. You understand? Dreamville. There's a lot of people out there who think dreams are bullshit and they should not even be considered. Because people say to themselves, uh, dreams are impossible. Why bother struggling and going through uh, a horrible life to maybe get what you want? And what I say to that is, it's not... It's not a matter of maybe getting what you want. It's a matter of getting what you want. Okay? Because if you really want something, you can achieve it. But the thing is, you got to stick to it no matter what. No matter how long it takes, eventually you will get there. And I haven't got there yet. I might not even be close. But at least I'm moving towards it, you know? You'll never get there if you don't move towards it. And people who just jump into the workforce and say, this is the, you know, that's the easy way out. And if you want to do that, then fine. No one's stopping you. It's great. Like, there's, not everyone has to have a dream. And maybe your dream is to work in a shitty job. And if that's your dream, great. That is easy to accomplish. But the majority of you, I know, have a dream of some sort. And you know, and I know, that you gave up on it. So all I'm saying is it's it can and will be worth it to just try. Just try. You know, you, you if you look at all these celebrities, all these, you know, whoever has su succeeded in their dream, you know, there's some that got lucky and happened to uh, uh, acquire their dream at a young age for whatever reason, like Justin Bieber got discovered on YouTube while he was still like in high school but a lot of them struggled for years and years to get to what they wanted and i like to use comed stand up comedians as an example cuz i don't think there's one stand up comedian that just got lucky and you know became a stand up comedian because when you're a singer you can have a good voice at any age, you could be born with like a special talent to sing, but you're not, when it comes to stand up comedy, you're not, you can't just go on stage your first time and actually blow it out of the water. You have to, that's something you have to practice at. And 
you have to practice by keep interacting with an audience over and over and over again and it takes years to actually perfect that craft that's one of the few things that you need to practice at in order to get good at there's not one stand-up comedian out there that their first ever gig on stage their first ever open mic night they absolutely dominated there's not one out there they all persistently continued to go on stage and even if they were a shitty comic in the beginning just by going on stage all the time they taught themselves how to do it properly and that is something you need to think about you may be shitty at it right now and may not know what to do but if you stick to it you'll get the hang of it you'll figure it out and don't worry about how long it takes it's just time we're all living in the same time and yeah right now it's shitty and str- and it's a struggle but just think about the outcome because i truly believe Everyone can achieve their dream as long as they stick to it and continue to at least try to do it. It's like walking, you know, I like to imagine a building. Like, let's say there's a building that you really want to get inside, but it's miles and miles away from you, and you don't have a car or any sort of transportation not even a horse to get you there so you can either just say i'm gonna go to this building that's right next to me that's a piece of garbage because it's right here and it's easy to get to or every day i can take a few steps and get a little bit closer and eventually i'll get to that building yeah it's gonna take years but i'll get there So, let's uh, do our final topic here. I want to touch on the 2020 Democratic debate. The one with Andrew Yang, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and the other fuckers. (laughs) Now, I am not an American. Uh, I've I've actually only ever been to America once, and that was in Montana. Whitefish, Montana. Uh, I loved it, actually. Um, but the the reason I'm, I want to talk about this Democratic debate is because, well, for a few reasons. One reason, the first reason, is because that is uh, that's a hot topic right now. <laughs> you know, I got to touch on um, current events because, uh, you know, that's how you get the views. And I'm not doing it just for the views. But uh, I also want to have conversations of what's happening right now. I don't, you know, because no one wants to hear about just whatever. Well, I can do, format it that way, but I, I want to talk about current events. And so I actually enjoy paying attention to what is going on in America, and you know what, you should, like, you should pay attention to all, what's going on all over the world, because it can, and probably will, affect you in your own country, in some sort of way, and America is, uh, basically, you know, America, (laughs) America is just south of where I am, I'm Canadian. I'm in Canada. So we're like brothers and brother and sister. Or brother and brother. Or sister and sister. Or whatever you want to say. We're both part of the same continent. And I actually enjoy watching the debates. Uh, I remember I remember watching them when... The, actually, the first time I ever watched them was when Donald Trump 
and Hillary Clinton and all of them. Even Bernie Sanders were debating. That was the first time I actually watched the debates. And I enjoyed it then, too. But, you know, before that, I was too young and didn't really care. But in, in this one, I paid attention and I watched the whole thing and it was interesting. There's a few things I don't like about this format of how they do the debates. Whereas, uh, like the, oops, I don't like the audience. Okay, I think they, I feel like they need, if they want to have this audience, they need to, what they should do is put the audience in a separate room or behind glass or something so you can't hear them. Because whenever a, a candidate wants to say something or is in the middle of saying something, they're they're either cheering or they're clapping and they, you know, they clap and cheer for too long and they... They don't give the the candidates a chance to actually talk. And they only have like 30 seconds to say what they need to say. And they can't if the fucking audience keeps <laughs> making a bunch of noise. And even even the, the second round, when they brought in the two other news people to, uh, to put forth the topics on the table, the, the woman which was, she was super aggressive. She, one of her points was, she talked to the audience and said, if you you guys need to shut up and and make as little noise as possible so we can hear what these guys need to say. And the audience just disregarded it completely. Um, so I, f- I feel like either have no audience or put the audience behind a fucking glass barrier so you can't hear them or something, you know? Like, uh, like those old fucking TV shows on MTV where you would see the the people, the interviewee people would be in a building, and then there, you'd see out the glass window a bunch of fans surrounding the window with like posters and shit, <laughs> screaming, but you couldn't hear them because they're behind a wall. Um. There was a few few times that, well, pr- pretty well, almost every every answer that the candidates had, they didn't actually answer the question. And it's always been that way when it comes to politics. They don't necessarily answer the question. But what I do like is when the, uh, what do you call them? What do you call the newscasters that ask the question? I don't even know. But the people who actually ask the questions, they sometimes repeat what they originally said so that these candidates answer it properly. But even when they repeat the question, they still don't answer the question properly sometimes. Sometimes sometimes they do, though. Like... Uh, there's... Out of, you know, out of all the candidates they had there... I actually like quite a few of them. And I wanted I wanted Andrew Yang to talk more. He barely fucking said a thing. He only talked when a question was directed toward him and there was only probably like two or three questions actually directed toward him. And that was the only time he talked. I wanted to hear more of what he had to say. And I don't necessarily agree with universal basic income. And that is his main... And from what, I, from what I've seen in the debate, that was his only topic that he touched on, was the universal basic income. Not only that, but he's a former tech executive. And then there was the, the other girl, Marianne Williamson... And she's an author. How does, and I mean, how do how do you how do you get to a point where you can actually run for president? Like, how did a former tech executive get put on this panel of senators and mayors that are running for president? Which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not. Uh, 
I'm not giving Andrew Yang shit about this. Like, uh, I think it's great that he's running for president. But I really wanted to hear more about what he, you know, really wanted to do. Basically, all he said was, with the universal basic income, he's going to give every American a thousand dollars a month for, you know, basic, basic necessities like food and uh, clothes, clothes and shit, whatever. But that's all he touched on. And then even at the end, when they did their final speech about why they should be president, that's all he talked about as well. So, but we are going to hear more from him because he's going on the H3 podcast. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, that is, that's, 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 you know, I would have never expected that. But when I found out, because, you know, you wouldn't think, like, imagine Bernie Sanders deciding that he wants to go on the H3, H3 podcast. I just, you can't see that happening. Because for one, Bernie Sanders probably doesn't even know what the H3, H3 podcast is. And two, even if he did, he probably wouldn't want to go on there anyway for whatever reason. But Andrew Yang, he is a former tech executive. He wasn't a senator. He wasn't a mayor. He wasn't a governor. He's he's never been in government. Well, as far as I know, I don't really know him that well. So he he's probably a fan of the H3 podcast, being that he's involved in tech. And he probably watches a lot of uh, YouTube. He probably knows fucking, uh, like, MK, MKBHD and, uh, uh, what is that other guy's name? Unbox Therapy Guy. I can't remember. Louie or something? I don't know. He probably watches them too, so he he's familiar with the H three podcast, and he understands that there are a lot of young individuals who watch the H three podcast, and he probably wants their vote. And I think it's a good it's a good uh, decision on his part to actually go on the H three podcast. And I, I actually can't wait to see it because, like I said. I want to hear what Andrew Yang is going to do. Because I like his um, campaign slogan, which is, not left, not right, forward. Because I've always said, like, this whole left and right division is, is stupid. There's good things on the right side. There's good things on the left side. There's bad things on the right side. There's bad things on the left side. You know, we can't just pick sides. We are no longer primal, animalistic creatures. We're beyond that point now. We don't have to rely on these tribal uh, ways of thinking. We don't have to choose a side what we need to do is gather the good things from every angle and combine it into something that works for everyone. And I feel like Andrew Yang can do that. But because he doesn't uh, voice his opinion enough, especially on these debates, I feel like he might have uh, a poor chance at actually becoming president um because if you looked at all the other candidates they were interrupting each other and one person said something someone else said something and someone else said something and even (laughs) even when their time was up they still continued to talk and then more people would talk over them and the people who who are they panelists I don't know. The people who asked the questions had to keep like, okay, stop, stop, stop. And no matter how how many times they told the people to stop talking, they just continued to talk over each other. And that gets a little frustrating. So I feel like at these debates, they should probably consider 
giving them more time to talk about stuff. Just a little bit more. I know I know there's too many people to actually get everything they want to say out. So that's why they're talking over each other and whatnot. But I feel like if they just extended the time of how long these debates could be and they give you know each person more time to talk about what they want to talk about that there could be a more civil discussion put forth rather than a bunch of people talking over each other like a bunch of children and so i guess i can appreciate that andrew yang didn't interrupt and over over speak but he still didn't say anything he didn't say anything other than his plans for universal basic income. Like, I wanted to hear what he's going to do for climate change. I wanted to hear what he's going to do for gun control. I wanted to hear what he's going to do for uh, health care. You know, all the stuff that, all these topics that they mentioned on the debate, he didn't touch on any of it. He didn't. He literally didn't. He didn't say anything. He was the only one out of all of them that didn't say anything. Which I so that's another reason why I find it well, no. So to see him come on the H C podcast is gonna be is gonna be good. It's gonna be a good episode. I hope Yeah. I don't know. I hope this helps him out a little bit. And I wonder if they're going to touch on the debates and how he didn't really talk. Because he really didn't. If you haven't seen the debates, just go watch them. And it's like, it's almost two hours long and he doesn't say, a f- he literally doesn't say a fucking thing. And I feel like he probably has a lot of good av- good ideas. But... He's not, uh, he didn't say anything, so, I don't know. Um, so, another another thing I noticed about these debates is that it kind of seems like, now I'm, I'm taking this from the past, because in the past, like Trump and even Obama, I'm not comparing Obama to Trump. Don't think I am. But Bush, but all the presidents, they all promise things and say stuff, but they say what you want to hear. And they don't necessarily do what they said they're going to do. And I understand. It's hard to get things done um, in the White House, you know. There's only a certain amount of things you can actually do. But uh, a lot of the times they don't ever do what they actually say they're going to do. Um, so yeah. I'm just reading my notes here. I got some notes. Robots are taking jobs. Why did I write that down? Robots. I know they touched on like what are they what are they going to do about uh the fact that technology is going to take everyone's job. Um but this has been this has been an issue in ever since the industrial revolution. You know, there was the whole Luddite phase where people were against the machinery because they, you know, they felt like it was taking their jobs, which it was. But I like to think about it this way. If you're doing a job that a robot can do, just let the robot do it and move on to something else. There's plenty of other things we can do as a human 
And I also like to think that if robots do take over all of our jobs, then that's a good thing. We, you know, because they take our jobs and that means we don't have to do that shitty work anymore. And that means we can afford to do the things that we need to do, like addressing climate change and uh, maybe pursuing this universal basic income. Because right now, a lot of the money is put forth in actually paying people to work. But if the robots are there, you don't have to pay robots. You just have to pay to build them. And then once they're built, they're good. And they don't complain. They don't even talk. And they don't need a schedule. They can just work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And you don't have to pay them shit. And especially if the uh, self-driving cars actually become you know, the main source of transportation rather than having a human drive the car, that's going to that's gonna be even better. And a lot of people don't trust. They say, I don't trust a robot to drive me around. But you got to think of it this way. Humans have a horrible reaction time when it comes to driving in vehicles. Our brains cannot process things fast enough in to correct what's going to happen. Because, you're, you know, you're driving at speeds of upwards of 100 kilometers an hour or more. You can't react that quickly, but a computer can react in milliseconds. You know, it can determine which brake on which tire needs to be applied, at what pressure, if there's, you know, hydroplaning happening, or if a crash is about to happen, that computer can analyze every possible scenario in less than, you know, 0.1 millisecond, and it'll determine what needs to be done, and it'll do it. But if every car, uh, you know, in the city in the country is simply controlled by AI, they're all going to be, you know, driving with each other. One breaks, the one behind it's going to break. You know, they all, they all work together with each other. They're all communicating with each other. So the, there will literally never be an accident unless something like, uh, you know, like someone purposely focuses on making an accident happen or you know maybe an animal jumps out in front of the car but even then the computer could probably respond fast enough to break and move out of the way so when 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 the entire country has the automated ai driven vehicles there will be no more crashes like the the the, the deaths of vehicle collisions will drop significantly. But until we get to that point, we're going to be at a stage where there's human drivers and artificial intelligence on the same road. And that is not a good combination. And then people are going to see accidents happening because of human error. And they're going to blame it on the computers. But once we get to the point where every vehicle is run by computers, we'll be fine. And then you won't even have to worry about driving. Because think about how much time you spend in your life actually driving. And during that time, you can't get anything done other than maybe talking on the phone and I don't mean distracted driving, I mean like hands-free talking on the phone. And even then, that can be dangerous. And also, you know, the other thing you can do is only listen to either music or podcasts or audiobooks, which is 
which is fine. You can learn from that. But if we have the automated vehicles, you can imagine how much shit you could get done. You could bring your computer in the car, watch, you know, even if you don't want to do work, you can watch movies or if you want to get work done, you can do it. You don't even have to pay attention to the road. Because every car is going to be synchronized with each other. Every car is going to know what's going on around it. And they're all going to be programmed to, to know how the roads work. And they'll probably learn their routes after they have driven on them once. So the more they drive, the more they learn, and the, the safer it becomes. Holy shit. This is a long podcast. Um, so while I'm, I'm recording this at... It's 11.30 p.m. right now. I never usually do this, but... This whole day has been kind of a nightmare for me. So I... I wanted to wait until nighttime so that I could, I don't know, actually have a conversation. Because for some reason in the daytime when I feel like, it feels like stuff can still happen. Like someone's going to text me to go do something or maybe I'll get a call that will go to work or whatever. So I just wanted to wait till night so that, you know, everything's calm and relaxed and but also I had to, I watched the debates right before this, right before I started this podcast, because I wanted to talk about this on the podcast, because I, you know, I need the the current event. So yeah, I think that's all I want to talk about today. I don't think I'm going to do Reddit today again. Well, again, I did it last time, but not, not a lot. But uh, Monday's episode will resume the format that I usually do, hopefully. But if not, there will definitely be Reddit, no matter what. Well, I say that now, but who knows how I'll think on when I record the Monday's podcast. But I, I you know what, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to uh, do Reddit. Because I like doing that. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 98. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. It's shady. S H. I T T How do you spell shady? Shitey.